The FBI raids on Cohen, executing search warrants against attorneys, exceedingly rare, obviously. And as CNN senior legal analyst Preet Bharara told us last night, it's an extremely ominous development for anybody on the receiving end of one. If I were still the United States attorney, no matter who the president was, and I was being asked to personally approve, as someone had to have been in the Southern District of New York, a search of someone's home, uh, an office who was counsel to the president, I would want a lot more than the bare minimum proof of probable cause. And so, so I predict, as we saw with Paul Manafort, that if they decided they had enough evidence to engage in a, you know, a, very, aggressive, a very aggressive move, that the likelihood that Michael Cohen is going to be charged is high. Back now with Professor Alan Dershowitz, Ambassador Norm Eisen. Do you agree with that? that the I think it is, but the question is not the rights of the lawyer. Everybody is entitled to get a search warrant against the lawyer. Lawyers aren't above the law. It's the rights of the client. That is, when you start taking the entire computer, all of the financial records, we know from reporting that it also includes conversations and so transactions. So how, how can it be done then? I mean, if you're saying a taint team isn't the way to do it, it's not right for FBI agents to be going through this. You're saying, what, a judge should be the one? The one? If anybody's going to go through it, it should be a judge or a neutral monitor appointed by the court so that the least number of people possible, the most trusted people, actually read the lawyer-client material information. Ambassador Eisen, do you agree with that? Well, first of all, in order to do these attorney-client searches, Anderson, uh, the subpoenas need to be very narrowly tailored, so you're not sweeping everything in. I have a different view of the taint teams. Um, uh, uh, you know, I had cases in which uh, the taint teams worked. I also supervised an FBI office uh, when I uh, served as ambassador, and I can tell you that those agents were honorable. I would trust them with my life, and I believe that if they have instructions not to leak, they will not leak. Professor? Boy, and I got a bridge to t sell you in Brooklyn. Uh, no leaks. Oh, my God, a leak? It sounds like the scene from Casablanca. Uh, leaking is pervasive. The head of the FBI, James Comey, leaked information and laundered it through a Columbia professor. That's the head of the FBI who's supposed to be stopping leaks. What kind of a message does that send you, you, to the FBI? What it says is leaking is okay. Leaking is pervasive you, in this government. You have said that uh, it would be a mistake for the president to fire Mueller. What about Rod Rosenstein? Rod Rosenstein should be recused. He cannot be both a witness and a prosecutor in the same case. He's a witness because he was involved in the Comey firing. Involved? Right, he he wrote, wrote the, the memo. If you're Trump's lawyer, the first person you call as a witness is Ron Rosenstein. You wrote the memo. Did you obstruct justice? Did you think this was an obstruction of justice? Would it be a mistake, in your opinion, though, for the president to replace Rod Rosenstein with somebody who was going to try to basically get rid of Mueller? Well, that's a tactical decision. I don't think Rosenstein, whoever replaced him, would try to get rid of Mueller. But I think Rosenstein's own status in the case raises very deep questions. Let's assume he doesn't get recused, and he then testifies. His lawyers will then come back and say, if he's now recused because he's testified, we have to go back and see if he tainted anything else earlier on in the case. It's a mistake.